Right, good morning. Now let's today explore the characteristic of DC Shan Mongto as well as DC Series Mongto. What are the differences? Okay, now uh, Shan Mongto is good for a constant speed. That is uh, Shan Mongto's characteristic. In other words, the speed doesn't change much with the variation of torque. Okay, now before we do that, we are going to do a, a mathematical example to illustrate that uh, Despite the change in the low, the, the speed won't change much. Alright? Now the basic uh, uh, formulas that we need to use is EB is proportional to N flux. Back EMF is proportional to speed and the magnetic flux. Okay, that's one. And the next one is torque is proportional to flux IA. Alright? Torque developed is proportional to Flux IA. Flux is the magnetic flux, I is the armature current. Now, so EB is proportional to N flux. It's just like our EG, remember in a separately excited generator, we talk about EG2 or EG1 equal to N2 or N1 flux to flux 1. Likewise, EB can be EB2 over EB1 equal to N2 over N1 flux 2 over flux 1. Alright, so in other words, if I know my first situation uh, at particular speed, right, at particular speed, if I know the back EMF, I know the magnetic flux, and at another speed, at another speed, I would have a, or another top condition, I have another back EMF, I will be able to calculate the, the new speed if I know the new flux as well. Alright, so we are going to make use of this proportional relationship to do our mathematics later. The next one is torque is proportional to flux IA. Now that makes it into torque developed 2 over torque developed 1 equal to flux 2 over flux 1 and IA2 over IA1. Alright? So likewise, if you know the new torque and as well as the original torque, and if you know the flux, you can find the new armature current. Now these two proportional relationships are often used in our motto uh, application examples to find unknown, to find unknown. So if I were to ask you to find new speed, which one would you use? Of course you would use this one, because this one involves speed. Right? If I ask you to find new torque, which one? You would use this one, because this one involves torque. Right? If, I, if the question asks you to find a new armature current, which one would you use? You would use this one, because this one involves the armature current. Right? Likewise, just like in our separately excited generator uh, mathematical analysis, flux often can be replaced by fuel current as well because fuel current is the one that produces the flux. Am I right? Okay, so that's so much about it. So let us now move on to an example. I have a shunt model circuit here and this model is operate on no load. Basically, when I say operate on no load means uh, there's nothing attached to the shaft of the model and it's free running. It's free running. Right? And because it's not doing useful, a lot of useful work, so the light current drawn is not much of a current, 3.9 ampere. Okay? Now in this circuit here, uh, we need to find IF1, we need to find IB1. Okay? Let's find IF1 first. IF1, what is the voltage across here? This is 230 volt, right? This is it's a parallel circuit. So IF1 is equal to VF. Vs over Rf, that is equal to 230 divided by 160. Okay? And that gives me the numerical answer of 1.4375 ampere. Then I find IB1. If I know this current, this current, can I get this current? Yes. By Kirchhoff's current law, it says IL1 minus IF1. So it's there for 3.9. Minus 1.4375 and I get I get uh, 2.4625 ampere. Right? Then I move on to find my EB1. EB1 is equal to Vs minus IA1RA, right? KBL, the just voltage law, the total voltage here is 230 volt. If I know this voltage and take away this, I will get EB1. Right? So it's therefore equal to 230 minus 2.4625 times 0 0.3 and I get EB1 that is equal to 229.26 volts. 
Alright? And with that, then I go on to calculate my uh, power developed. Uh, okay, there's no need. So now let's move on to the full load. A full load situation. When my motor is on full load, basically means that I'm attaching a very heavy object to its shaft and it has to work really hard and it's going to draw a lot of current. So on full load, my circuit is still the same. But the current drawn will be different. Okay? On full load, the current drawn is much higher now. It is equal to 42 ampere, right? Because it's doing a lot of work, so it needs to draw out a lot of current. And RF is still the same, 160 ohm. And IF2 should be the same as IF1 because there's no change in voltage, no change in resistance, right? But IA2 will be different. Okay, IA2, we do not know what it is. It should be this minus this to give me IA2. Right? And RA is still the same, 0 0.3 ohm. And this motto here, EB should not be the same anymore because IA is different. Okay, let's do our mathematics. IF2 is the same as IF1. Right? It's the same as IF1. So that's 1.4375 ampere. Okay? And IA2 is now equal to IL2 minus IF2 so that is equal to 42 minus 1.4375 and I get 40.5625 appear then I calculate EB2 EB2 is going to be S minus IARA right so that is equal to be S minus IA2RA so that is 230 minus 40.5625 times 0 0.3 and I get EB2 is equal to 217.83 volts now I have EB1 I have EB2 right and I also need to tell you about the speed now the uh, at no load the original speed N1 is equal to uh, 1200 rpm so now I want to find M2. Okay? So now let's go, go back and look at these two proportional relationship. From what I have calculated, now I want to find the new speed. I use this one or I use this one? Of course I use this one because I already calculated EB2 and EB1. Right? And then M2 is an unknown. Okay, let's see how we do to find our new speed. Okay, so EV2 from what I have calculated just now is 217.83. So EV2 over EV1 equal to N2 over N1 plus 2 over plus 1. So EV2 is 217.83. EV1 is 229.26. N2 is an unknown, a new speed. N1 is 1200 RPM. And flux 2 and flux 1, I replace it by current. And I know that there's no change. Because it's a power circuit, no change in voltage, no change in resistance. IF is the same. If IF is the same, flux is the same. Right? So now that I come back to here, in this equation here, if I solve my N2, N2 is equal to 1140.17 RPM. So you can see from this example here, the original speed was 1002. Now with full load, the speed now is 140. So there isn't much change in the speed and that is the characteristic of the DC shunt motor. Right? For interest sake, we could actually go on to calculate the torque. Right? If you still remember the equation about the torque, torque is equal to 60 over 2 pi. And multiply power developed. Right? So first of all, I need to calculate the power developed, which is equal to EB1 IE1. Yes? And I've already done my sum, and that is equal to uh, 564.551. Right? And then I calculate the torque using 60 over 2 pi n multiply power developed. Yeah? And the n of course is 1002, 
2,002 RPM and power developed is this value and I found that the top developed is 4.49 newton meters so at 4.49 newton meters the speed was 1,002 RPM okay now when it's on full load full load means I'm attaching a heavy object to it and it's doing a, a lot of work oh, let us show you that the top is uh, a higher value now So again, power developed to is EV2, IA2 using the value that we have calculated just now and that is equal to 8835.78 watt right? and torque is equal to uh, if I were to use 60 over 2 pi N2 multiplied power developed to yeah? and N2 is the one that I calculated just now uh, 140 0.17 how developed is this value and the top now is 73.95 newton meters so can you see that at low low the top is 4.49 at full low the top is 73 but in terms of speed at low low the speed is 1002 right and at full low the speed calculated is uh, 1140 so even though there is a lot of change in the torque, but the speed remains rather constant. And that is the characteristic of DC shunt motor. Alright, thank you.